Hi, I'm Fran with Stampendous, and I'm so excited to introduce the Laurel Birch designs as rubber stamps of many different kinds. work you will recognize with all the wonderful cats and the flowers and the beautiful vibrant colors and now that we have these stamp products you can enjoy using them to create the, this beautiful colorful magical look of Laurel Birch. Laurel Birch designs are available in wood mounted stamps as you see here with beautiful trimming and very deeply etched that make a classic uh, stamp and besides the wood mounted ones you also have a choice of purchasing them as a cling rubber stamp and in case this is new to you you'll see them in this type of a package with lots of information on the back and when you take it out of the package you'll find that it's on this type of a panel of acetate. This just helps us get it into the package and so I want to make sure that you understand that this element there's a cling sticker on the top of the foam and rubber stamp and this acetate you can set aside but you do not want to remove this little cling sticker. This has the design on it and it's the cling element. So, so when you press it onto your acrylic handle you're just going to press it down around the edges and then press to make sure that it's hanging onto the block and then you're ready for your ink. So let's say we have an ink pad here and this ink pad has a raised surface to it but you can simply take your stamp now on the handle ink it up make sure it's well inked all the way around and then you can press it to your paper and make a wonderful impression every time. So it's as simple as that and you can clean your stamps off while they're still on the block and that makes it very easy to work with. So there's a wonderful range of wood stamps and then the corresponding cling rubber stamps that will be a savings to you because you can buy the handles separately and enjoy easy storage with all of your Laurel Birch stamps. The Laurel Birch Clear Stamps are also available and you can see three different sets here to start with and each one of them has a beautiful range of images and messages to complete all of your card making. So in, with these when you open them up you'll find that each of the cling stamps will peel off of the acetate um, liner there and you simply press it onto your acrylic handle and then you're ready to ink and stamp and then you're ready to color and again quick clean up with your wet wipe and then the cling the clear uh, pieces will cling back in place for storage in each set We also have some wonderful cling rubber stamp sets with a whole group of images here like the blossoming woman and the indigo cats and besides the stamps in the set and let me just show you this type of stamps are beautifully made cling rubber and each of the pieces will simply press onto the block like this and you're ready to stamp and besides the stamps you also when you turn things over you'll see here on the colorful insert on the back a lot of fun ways that you can create cards with them up here you'll see that the set also includes this clever stencil it's easier to see in the diagram than in my hand but this will allow you to cover one area while you're stamping another 
do some geometric background patterns and cover up one area while you're working on another with your color work. So that's a very helpful tool. And in addition to that, you have a cutting die set. So these are wafer dies, which means they're very thin, easy to work with. On ours, the cutting edge is on the very inside, which allows you to stamp and color, and then when you're ready to cut out your pieces, you line it up exactly, and you can see where it fits. Works. You would position it on your platform with a cutting plate underneath, line it up, position your wafer die, put another no-cut plate on top, sandwich them together, and then run it through um, your Sizzix or whatever die cutting machine you prefer. And when you take them off of the, the packaging insert, you can throw away the sticky tape and you may choose to store all of your dies on a magnetic sheet so that they're easy to find and you won't lose any of those important pieces. In addition to the Blossoming Woman pattern, we have the Indigo Cats. And as you can see here, you've got cats and butterflies and a stencil that has some wonderful geometric patterns to it so that you can do all sorts of interesting background patterns and you can also use your dies to cut some acetate if you want to make masks of each of the cat shapes and then you can enjoy making cards and even wonderful pop-up cards like I did here. It's just so fun and easy to have the two sets so that you can both stamp and die cut. talk about color. With the Laurel Birch palette there's beautiful bright colors and she worked primarily with paints and brushes and seeing the picture of some of her palettes I think she used her brushes and never cleaned them and transitioned from one color to the next to the next creating beautiful range of uh, blended colors that are so colorful and vibrant. Here's just a couple of samples that you can see. So let's talk about whatever medium you like to work with and give you some options. Let's talk about the Laurel Birch color palette. Now she worked primarily in vivid paint colors and brushes and she often worked on a very large scale. I understand she did a mural in a restaurant in Sausalito called Michaela, and it's just beautiful, and I would love to see it in, in real life size. Now you're working with card making or journals, perhaps, on a smaller scale with the stamps. So you might do some beautiful work with your uh, brushes and do some miniature paintings. But I just wanted to remind everyone, of course, you can use any medium that you're most comfortable with. Whether that's color pencils, you can still get your beautiful, vibrant colors. Whether it's watercolors of any kind or an aquarelle color pencil. And then, of course, you've got all your beautiful range of marker colors. And you can blend all your different colors that you need and uh, create some beautiful um, looks that are going to capture this beautiful color palette of, of the Laurel Birch. I even did some spritzing here with one of the little handheld spritzers and of course you've got airbrush options whether that's uh, traditional or with your markers. We created this color chart primarily for the Copic markers and we've made the large colors the dominant ones and added other secondary use uh, ones as well on the colorful chart and this is on our website you can download it and you can also print it out and make uh, your own 
um, colored in one so that it's exact and true to your marker colors and it will shift a little bit when you print so that's why you've got this chart available and all of the code numbers are on there so that you can create your own original like this and we've got all of the colorful ones here and also a range of neutral colors down here including gold because that's another um, she did a lot of highlighting with a metallic gold and it really gives a nice finish so with your markers um, we've got the memento ink and if you work on a nice paper you'll be able to stamp and then just have so much fun with the coloring and I'll mention just a couple of things here as you can see Laurel just did incredibly beautiful color transitions and uh, I don't think she ever colored the same thing the same way twice and while the uh, let's see I'll show you here that the indigo cats for example were done in blues with dark blue sky background but you can also do them in some very fun whimsical colors like this as well and if you'll notice the cats almost always have wonderful eye shadows so you can have lots of fun with colors on uh, your cats and I'll mention too Laurel rarely left, uh, well of course on a canvas, rarely left anything white. So you can enjoy coloring all of the images and then decide how you want to do the backgrounds as well because as you can see on this one there's some wonderful um, color work all the way around the edges. So I um, just did some kind of little practice panels here of just doing some of these color shifts and some of this kind of interesting work uh, behind any of the images is just really fun. And here you can see a little bit of um, the dot kind of work with all of the uh, metallic gold on black and dark color backgrounds really set off the beautiful um, colors of um, the images. You can see here with the Blossoming Woman that with the change of skin tones you can create a whole international <laughs> appeal of uh, beautiful women from around the world and it's just very fun to enjoy all of the color changes and the different outfits and it really is lots of fun to create variety. Here you can see with these wonderful horses, you can see that I've done this one with color pencil and uh, an aquarelle color pencil and I sort of got some of the dappled sort of look of her original painting. And then I did another version with markers. Here's another beautifully vivid one that Kat did with all of these um, colors. And then here's one where I did more of the neutrals. Um, and that's where you can see on the color chart the range of colors down here uh, with the blues gives you just a beautiful, um, completely different look that you can create. I wanted to mention a couple other things about just some tips working with uh, Laurel Birch color palette and the Copic markers and I really uh, liked how um, Kat did this beautiful piece here with the horses and she's so uh, skilled with all of the color blending and for me the color work and the blending is is new to me and I take a more also maybe folk art approach uh, to uh, working with the Copic markers and so I found a lot of the stippling style was very helpful for me especially in making these quick color changes from one area to another so that may be helpful to you and also um, Kat did the color range like this working off the edges and I found this was really a useful way to identify colors that I hadn't thought of so you might take your color chart and get all the numbers from that and then build on it from there and find your other uh, blending colors and things as well. There's really no limit to it. 
But doing the chart gave us a way to help explain the dominance of colors. And uh, some other things, for example, Laurel um, perhaps rarely put yellow next to red. But again, my theory is if she's mixing and not cleaning her brush, she'd be getting to that by going through these other uh, oranges uh, to the other shades of reds. And quite often she made beautiful uh, jumps between complementary colors and you just see some beautiful um, color changes within her work that is just so fun. And on some of this, um, let's say here where you're working with a lot of um, all different colors, Sometimes instead of making uh, value transitions, you're actually doing all of this quick color changing. So you might have a range of colors that are all the same vivid color, but by doing them in rainbow sequence, you'll be able to blend them beautifully to go from one uh, quick color area to another. And then using the complementary colors just really sets it off. So you'll be able, the more you play with this and the more you look at some of her work, the more you'll see how she just had such a beautiful, vivid color uh, palette. So you can have a lot of fun with that. And the markers are a wonderful way to achieve this look. When it comes to making Laurel Birch cards, I wanted to give you a few other fun tips related to the interesting papers. And this whole look here of a torn edge and all of these handmade papers is just a really nice fun look that you might choose to incorporate into your cards. And I was able to find a beautiful array here of some handmade papers like this one and these vivid colors of these mulberry paper that have wonderful fibers and you can um, tear into some pieces of that and even found this wonderful gold um, uh, paper that is so um, reflective and so all of these torn papers will give you another way to just really work in some fun elements into your card making here was a handmade paper piece that just really fit uh, with this blossoming woman and so you can see here, if you do some marker work out to the edges, um, you may choose to tear right into that very edge, or leaving a white edge is actually quite striking as well. Here's one on a card put together. And this one I tore right up to the edge, but then these other beautiful papers just really set it off. And one of her originals, this one of the Rainbow Soul, um, it may have been a large painting framed with beautiful papers like this, but now you can do it in miniature as a card, and it just works out lovely. And on this one, I'll mention embossing the geometric patterns on dark color papers is another really nice option that fits the whole fun look. Uh, this one as well. And I used the uh, Champagne Pearl Luster, uh, which gave me all the fine... Uh, detail but the beautiful gold look to it and a lot easier than doing dots by hand with all the gold which Laurel seemed to do an awful lot of in her originals. So be sure and take a look at our gallery of cards here at the end. This is the best part just to see lots of inspiration of ways that you can enjoy creating cards with all of the Laurel Birch stamps from Stampendous. Mm -hmm.